What's up everyone? So today's lesson, I'm going to be showing you the most insane B2B marketing strategy of 2023. If there's a better one out there, send it to me because we will beat it. This is essentially what we call 360 degree prospecting and how we use this to save one of my clients over $49,000 that he was going to spend on building this exact same list. I guarantee you haven't seen anything like this before. Let's get into it. Let's say this is your target here. This is John and he is a attorney and he's the exact customer we want to get with. Uh, maybe John to you is an investor. Maybe John to you is somebody that, you know, looking a new CRM. John can be many things, right? John is your customer. It is your ideal customer. It is your ICP, which is your ideal customer profile. The thing about John is he does many things. He's got a LinkedIn account. He checks his email, goes on Facebook, is on YouTube. He also, you know, scrolls through Google, right? So there's different ways, different things that John does. What the average person will do is they'll just be like, oh, where does John spend the most time? And they'll be like, well, let's say he spends the most time on LinkedIn. So let's just do LinkedIn and we're just going to run LinkedIn campaign, right? But the thing is, it takes a certain amount of touch points to really convert a customer. What we want to be able to do is we want to be able to identify John, but every single way, uh, every single identifier that John uses across these platforms, because here's the thing. In order to use Google, he might have a Gmail. In order to use YouTube, he might use a personal email. In order to use Facebook, he might use a personal email that he used like 10 years ago. It might be, you know, john63 at gmail.com. Uh, in order for his email, he's gonna use his business email. Same with his phone number. If we wanna contact him, he's probably gonna be using his business phone number. Uh, LinkedIn is gonna be using his business LinkedIn. Google, he might be using the same email as Facebook. We don't know. So there's numbers of, of ways that we can attack John. There's all these different ways. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to identify our list of Johns, so 100,000 or so Johns, and we're going to build what we call a 360 degree prospecting list. Okay, so this is uh, essentially a breakdown of exactly what we're going to be doing. So the first step we're going to do is we're going to build a customer list and we're going to identify all the different ways that we can find our job. For this example, let's find all the Ruperts. The first thing you want to do is you want to identify the different qualifiers that you can use to re-identify a roofer online. So the different examples is one, you can look at the SIT code. This is the standard industrial classification code. Essentially every single business in America has one of these. We're gonna go over here and we can easily identify a group of plumbers here. So you can see here, there's actually like quite a bit in terms of like what we can use for plumbing. All right, so we're looking at plumbers that specialize in plumbers, heating and air conditioning, right? We're gonna click on this one here. Now it's free to look but it costs money to buy this unless you use audience up, which is you know, obviously our technology. So of course we're gonna plug it, all right? And this is how we saved our company, uh, our clients so much money. Okay, so we're inside of here and you can see here, essentially there's 119,000 companies that we can use from the SIT code. And this is different companies. Like we got plumbing and heating contractors. We have like solar heating uh, companies, a bunch of different companies in terms of plumbers that we can find. We can go further down and we can actually look at specific companies. There's a ton of stuff we can do. All we need to do is identify the SIC, which is the SIC code. So we're going to go into here, 171, plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. And what we're going to do is we're just going to use that. Let me just grab this, SIC 171. That's what I'm going to use to be able to find these guys. So we've got 1711 here, and uh, then 17 here. So I'm going to use the subcategory here, which is 1711. So that's the SIC code. So I'm going to go over to here. And the first thing I want to do, I want to be able to find the SIC. So I'm just going to put here, this is a SIC number. So that's one way I can do it. The second way I can do this is a job search. Okay, so I can actually just look at like, what is the job? Uh, your first thought would be to say plumber, but is that actually what people put as their LinkedIn profile or is that how they put themselves online? So I might go to job title and I'm gonna type in plumber. So you've got job title and how it's presented. So say for an example, lawyers, you know, they use attorney. So we wanna find the special language that we can see. And the best way to do that is look at their LinkedIn profile. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here, over to the search bar, and I'm just gonna type in plumber, see what I can find. All right, so we can see here, so we've got this guy who's a plumber, this guy who's a plumber and owner. You've got mechanical plumber. Um, so I'm just gonna over here and I'm just gonna type in these. So I've got gonna have plumber, we're gonna have mechanical plumber, and we're also gonna have plumber and founder. Okay, so that's the second way I can find is through job search. Now, the third way I can find is I just need companies or I need websites. So if I've got a list of websites that I know are plumbers, like a list of competitors, maybe there's like big sites that I can use. I can just type these in here and use that. Fourth way is to use what is called built with. All right, now built with is pretty cool. Essentially what it does is it shows you what software people are using. Say, let's just go for high level, for example. We go into here, he's gonna go built with, type in go high level. All right, so I'll just pull this up. So basically I go to builtwith.com. I type in go high level, uh, cause that's the software I'm looking at whatever it's gonna be unique to your prospect. I just click into here and I can see a bunch of websites that are using high level. Okay, so I can go to here quite easily. 
I can download this entire list. And what's gonna happen is Built With is gonna give me a very mixed result. It's gonna give me like the names and numbers, but it's not gonna be anything I can really use. Emails, support at whatever that site is or info at that site. We just need the companies and we need the domains from there. So we just go to download full list and we'll be able to download that quite easily. Okay. So that's a, the, another way that we have here. Then what we want to do, if we still can't get it to work and it's really targeted, which if it's this targeted, you want to start broadening it out a little bit. You want at least 20 to 50K. All we're going to do is a LinkedIn sales navigator search. Now for this, all we need to do is add booleans until we find our customer and then use that string or identify those LinkedIn profiles and we can use that to match later. So if I go into LinkedIn, once you're in LinkedIn, you want to head over to sales navigator. If you haven't used sales navigator before, that's really cool because what you can do is you can just go to Google and type in LinkedIn sales navigator free trial and you'll be able to get a free trial of this bad boy for like 30 days. It's like 90 bucks for this thing. It's highly recommended uh, because you can really tailor what you're looking for. Once you're inside LinkedIn sales navigator, go to lead filters just over here. Now, what you want to do when you're starting out inside of here is you just want to start specifying via industry and geography. So industry, if I was looking for a plumber, now you've got to think if I'm looking for a plumber, they're probably not that active on LinkedIn anyway, so it might not be the best way, but this is how I'd look at it. Honestly, if I was doing any kind of local service, I would just do the sick lookup or a job lookup. Uh, probably the SIC is going to be the most accurate. Either way, I can just go here and let's say plumber. You know, it's not going to have plumber. It's going to have something else like, you know, uh, tradesman or something like that. Let me just see here. Especially trade contractors. Uh, so I type in an industry just like so. Uh, what I can also do is I can go to search keywords here and I can use what is called a Boolean. So what you want to do here is you want to go bracket one of these bad boys. You want to go, let's say, for an example, plumber contractor. And this is going to say, is it plumber or or is it a contractor? And I want to go form like this. It's going to find people that have that mentioned maybe in their bios or something. So what you need to do then is you just need to save this list and export this list of LinkedIn profiles. There's a dozen ways to do this. I can do another training on that, but this isn't really specifically just on how to extract stuff out of LinkedIn, but it's super easy to do. So here I've got 4,000 lists that I can use for this. So that's how you can get your lead list. Just to recap, we can one, use the SIC lookup, which is the standard industrial classification. We can just look that up and find the actual SIC code. Two, we can just do a job search. So what I mean by job search is we just need to find the actual title of the job and then we can do that later inside our audience lab. Three, we can look at the names and companies and the websites. So if you know the companies off, you know, off the top of your head or you know the domains off the top of your head, or we can use built with. So we can go to built with and you know, you're trying to find like a particular set of people using a certain type of software. You can go on something like built with and you can find that. And then five, you can do a LinkedIn sales navigator search. So that's booleans or any types of keywords and find your LinkedIn sales navigator URL and then just export those. Now, if you still don't know how to find your customer and you still can't find them, chances are it's way too specific. This way is actually more broad. This is another way you can do it, but you can go a little bit more broader and you can say what revenue range do they have? How many employees do they have? And you know, what broad industry do they have? So this is like the broad industry of LinkedIn. Once you have all this info, you can actually use our audience lab tool to be able to look up uh, any person you want using this info. So for those of you who know, you can go on audience lab right now, you can look at keywords and you can build from pre-made in markets you can build from 30 billion keywords things like that but for our enrichment tool you can also look up based on these identifiers okay so this is the list i built inside of audience lab now if you're not using audience lab you can use something like apollo but you're going to be paying upwards of 15 cents per record if i wanted to go in like this client that wanted to do sick codes if you want to do sick codes the data is going to be accurate but if you buy this list like if we go to buy this list here of all the plumbers so 119,000 plumbers we're looking at 23 cents which is insanely expensive if you sign up for audience lab and you go through our das program which uh, should be below somewhere you can actually get all this data where it's virtually unlimited i think it's like 1.2 million dollars a year of data that you get which is just insane so we're not going to pay 23 cents per record for 100,000 records we're gonna use audience lab so this is what you'll get when you pull that in audience lab so if i was to go in audience lab and I was to put in the SIC, this is what I would get. There's a few different parameters here, and this is how we interpret the data, okay? And this is where it comes into building a 360 degree prospecting, all right? So let me show you this file here. So this is the different ways you can activate a single list. So let's say for an example, in this particular prospect list, so let's say we went through the SIC code, we found all the plumbers, and now what we wanna do is we wanna send them cold email, we wanna do cold call, we wanna do Facebook ads, we wanna do maybe a direct mail campaign, 
and we want to do a LinkedIn automation campaign using something like Wowlaxy or anything like that. Okay, this is how we'll do it. The first thing you'll notice here is essentially we've got the activation type and then the identifier is needed. So essentially if we're doing cold email, what we need is we need the business email and then we need the business email validation status. So what I would do is I would just grab this list and I would assort it by anybody that has a valid email and I would do the business email only. I would not do the personal email because you don't want to send personal emails when you're doing type of cold email campaign. You want to do B2B emails. If I was doing cold call, first of all, I would get the B2B phone number. If you go to here and you'll get all this when you export it out, just here. So I get the B2B phone number. Now this is the number that we've tied to the business, right? And the individual. So it's the number the individual's using with the business. So it could be their cell phone. It could be an external number that they use, but we know this one is quite accurate. You can see the phone validation status. If that's valid. It means we know it's a valid phone number you can use for their business. Now, the next one that you might want to use uh, if you're doing any kind of cold call is you might want to do direct number and direct extension. So let's say for an example, they have a main phone that they use inside the office and you need to get through them through an extension. Sometimes it'll be the same as the B2B phone number or it'll be a different number, which is their office phone. That's how to hit them every way with cold email. That's how to hit them every single way with cold call. Now, let's say you want to be able to run Facebook ads as well. If you were to go and a lot of people are like, well, couldn't I just scrape this list and get their B2B email? No, but you could, it might take you ages, but you're not going to get the right accurate email. We validate our emails against a billion emails each day so that we can actually see their validation status. But here, you might want to do Facebook ads. Now to do that, you need what's called a SHA-256. This is the hashed email associated with that prospect. So if I was to look at this example here, let's say we have Michael, the email that he used on Facebook, this one here, but the email that he uses for his business and his LinkedIn is over, okay? So if we were to use his uh, business email, the match rate is going to be terrible. We're going to be looking at probably like 10% on Facebook ads. That's why the audience isn't going to run. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the source of truth here, which is the SHA-256. And that is a hashed email. So essentially, that's the email that he's using for all his social type stuff. Okay, so if we use a hash email, we're going to be able to find who he is in terms of Facebook, who he is in terms of Google and so forth. So that's what we're going to use for ads. So Google, Facebook, uh, even TikTok, we can all use that SHA-256 to be able to have hyper-targeted ads. Not only can we go through and we can target our prospects through cold email and we can do direct cold call, we can also run targeted Facebook ads to them and know that we're going to actually be matching their personal identifiers on Facebook ads, not just some broad, you know, throwing any company email in there. If we wanted to as well, we could do direct mail. So you've also got the company address. Okay, what you want to do is you want to focus on the company address if you're doing any kind of direct mail. You don't want to do the personal address, which you also get using this data. I would not recommend doing a direct mail campaign to their personal address because that's going to creep them out. You want it to go to the business address. And finally, what we could do is we could also do a LinkedIn automation campaign. We usually use something like Wowlaxy for this. And you just need to take the LinkedIn URL and you upload that and then you can connect with them on LinkedIn. Let's say we've got John Smith over here, right? And he has a Facebook account. He got, has a LinkedIn account. He has his business email. He's got his business address and he's also got a business phone number and he's got a direct extension that he uses for reception. So let's say we really wanted to reach John. If we exhaust all these different touch points, there's no way that we're not going to get in touch with this guy. Like if he sees us when we're running ads, we connect with him on LinkedIn. He also, you know, has somebody that calls up in order to speak with him. And then he also has a direct email campaign going out. Plus maybe you want to do direct mail if you're really trying to find your John, then there's no way that you're not going to be able to find him. He's going to notice you. And this is why it's so important to be able to have multiple identifiers for a single prospect. What a lot of people do is they 180 degree marketing where it's like, they'll just literally have a LinkedIn profile and then they'll try to get those LinkedIn profiles and put them on Facebook ads. That doesn't work. So if you're doing any form of B2B marketing and you're trying to market to businesses, you need to use a 360 degree prospecting approach. Don't just rely on LinkedIn campaigns. Don't just rely on email campaigns. You want to have the whole thing put together. And if you're really smart about it, you also use the hashed email to do uh, Gmail promotion campaigns. There's a whole bunch of tutorials you can find on that. I might do one soon as I get more familiar with it, but you can actually get ads inside of their inbox as well as doing your cold email campaigns. That could be overkill, but that is every single way to reach a prospect. Once you go to 360 degree prospecting, you'll never 
want to do one dimensional ever again. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Again, if you want to access over $1.2 million of data, so you want to be able to use the same data as companies like Apollo and Clearbit. If you want unlimited data and you want to be able to do this for both yourself and your clients, click the link below and sign up to our data as a service program because uh, we're seeing amazing results there and it's honestly just such a good deal that you guys get. Other than that, hope that helped. That is every single way that you can identify a B2B prospect online and how to build a 360 degree prospecting list. Peace.